Hi, I'm John Barry, President and CEO of Wings of the Rockies Air and Space Museum. And today, we are going to go behind the wings on an accident that shook the nation, the 20th anniversary of that mishap. What went wrong and what lessons we can learn from that mishap? Columbia, the International Research Mission. Complex systems fail in complex ways with complex solutions. This is Lessons from the Space Shuttle Columbia Mishap. It's time to go behind the wings. Throughout its more than 60 years history, NASA has accomplished incredible feats of space exploration, technological, and discovery advancements. However, Columbia represents a turning point that calls for reflection and debate to understand what happened in the accident, why the accident occurred, and how NASA responded moving forward. Well, we all know spaceflight is far from routine and involves substantial elements of risk. We need to recognize those risks and must never accept them with any kind of resignation. We owe this to the legacy of Columbia and her crew. Yeah, this is the block down there. Now on February 1st, 2003, the Space Shuttle Columbia was destroyed during what we called STS-107 upon atmospheric re-entry resulting in the death of seven astronauts on board. This national disaster led to the suspension of the space shuttle flights for more than two years, while the Columbia Accident Investigation Board, with the help of NASA, investigated the cause of this destruction. I was honored to have the privilege to serve on the Columbia Accident Investigation Board as a board member and as an executive director. But before we get into the details of the accident itself, let's talk about the development of the space shuttle itself and why NASA needed that vehicle. The Space Shuttle was the first operational vehicle that was designed for reuse. Beginning in the early 1950s, NASA and the United States Air Force collaborated on developing a lifting body, that, a kind of a test aircraft, that primarily generated lift from the fuselage and not just the wings. And that became the Space Shuttle in 1981 that served this nation so well for many decades. The Space Shuttle would support short duration crewed missions for NASA and the capabilities to launch service and retrieve satellites for commercial operations, U.S. Air Force, etc. Five complete Space Shuttle Orbiter vehicles were built over those many years and flew a total of 135 missions from 1981 to 2011 when the Space Shuttle program was canceled. Yeah, we see it down here, Bill. It's beautiful. The program was seen as success. STS-107, where we had the Columbia accident, was the 113th flight of the Space Shuttle, but it was the final flight, of course, for the Space Shuttle Columbia. Now, the accident was a major event for the nation and for the world. It was caused by technological, culture, mechanical, and organizational failures. We, as members of the Columbia Accident Investigation Board, did not just look into the Columbia accident, but the whole Space Shuttle program. So the question is, what exactly happened on that day in January 16th? As the shuttle Columbia was launching at about 81 seconds uh, after flight, a piece of foam came off on this bipod connection here. There's two on the top and two on the bottom to connect to the external tank. As you can see, the orange is all foam on the external tank because it's minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit for hydrogen and almost 300 degrees, minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit for oxygen, about 500,000 gallons of fuel in the external tank. If you had a thermos bottle with super cool stuff inside in Florida, you'd have water that would be condensated and be made into ice. And they didn't want to have ice falling off the external tank, so they covered it with foam. But this foam on this particular day came off at this left juncture in one piece, about 2.2 pounds of foam. It broke into three pieces. And the largest piece, about 1.2 pounds, hit panel number eight on the left wing and damaged it at 65,000 feet, resulting in the loss of Columbia. To get a better sense of not only the technical, but the personal aspects of this accident, we're going to talk to Steve Lindsay. Now, Steve is a retired colonel, but a former astronaut, head of the astronaut office, who was charged with escorting the families after this horrible accident. 
Steve, uh, you and I have talked about the catastrophes uh, that have happened at NASA, especially the Columbia accident in 2003. Uh, talk us through a bit about how those incidents affected NASA, but even how it affected you personally. I was actually the family escort for that mission. So I was, uh, I was there for launch. And of course I was there standing by the runway uh, with the families that day that the Columbia didn't return. It had a profound impact on me. It's a day that I try not to think about too much uh, because of what it was like. But it was much harder for the families than it was, certainly was for me. A quick story that I don't know if I ever told you, John, is that when I flew my first flight, uh, it was on Columbia and we did a 16 day science mission. And you know, we'd, we'd had problems with foam coming off the tank and uh, you know, the cause of the Columbia accident was foam coming off the external tank. But we'd been taking foam damage since the beginning of the space shuttle program that would come off that external tank. But on my first flight, um, STS-87, uh, we didn't know at the time is uh, we had significant foam shedding uh, during ascent, unexpected. And it was a real problem, we actually fixed that. Um, but when I landed after that mission, we typically get off the vehicle about an hour after landing. And if, if we're able to, we can do a walk around uh, before we go back to crew quarters. And I remember doing the walk around, walking underneath the uh, uh, heat shield. I saw tile damage everywhere. I saw holes in tiles. It looked it looked peppered white and it's normally black underneath with all of the tile damage. I saw tiles that were melted and slumped and, and damage everywhere. Instead of walking away from that saying, we have a significant problem here with this foam and we need to fix it. I walked away thinking, this vehicle is really tough. It can take a lot of damage and keep flying. And I drew exactly the wrong lesson. I learned a lot of valuable lessons. One is never accept something when it's not performing like it's supposed to. Always stay hungry for the data. You can never let your guard down in space flight. You have to be relentless in your focused management of of complex systems like this really disturbed me because I felt like we were all to blame. Uh, each one of us could have could have figured this out and stopped it, and we didn't. Thanks, Steve. Always good to talk to you, particularly your deep insights uh, regarding Columbia. Now, following the disaster, NASA carried out a three-month search, costing over three hundred five million dollars and using more than 30,000 personnel from 130 federal agencies and more than 37 helicopters and seven fixed wing aircraft to try to piece this investigation together. It was the largest search ever in the history of the United States with over 700,000 acres searched by foot and 1.6 million acres searched by air to find parts and pieces of the shuttle. They were able to recover about 38% of Columbia, totaling more than 84,000 pounds of material. An amazing logistical challenge. In addition to the technical causes, another major factor for Columbia were the organizational causes, decision-making, culture, and system effects. Columbia Houston, UHF comm check. The shuttle program flew 87 successful missions between Challenger in 1986 and Columbia in 2003, 17 years. But the shuttle program had been operating too close to too many margins and was mischaracterized in 1995 by NASA as a mature and reliable system. It wasn't. The shuttle budget and workforce was reduced by 40% over that time period. There was little margin for addressing unexpected technical problems or to make upgrades. NASA believed it could continue to outsource more functions. By using the shuttle to carry out operational missions, NASA reduced engineering functions normally associated with a flight development vehicle, because it still was an experimental vehicle. But after the incident, NASA, led by the Columbia Accident Investigation Board, took a hard look at what went wrong, and we looked ahead to fix the issues, both technical and organizational. And now we're going to get an insight on how are we going to get the space shuttle back into space. We're going to talk to Eileen Collins, a retired colonel in the United States Air Force and former astronaut who served as the commander on the next flight after the space shuttle Columbia accident. Step us through what your role was and uh, what it felt like to be that person that was selected after a major catastrophe for the nation, the Columbia mishap. Frankly, I would say I was very confident and I 
wanted to lead that mission more than anything. And, and I'm not saying that from like, I got a chip on my shoulder or something because I've had people tell me I was naive um, just because of the way I like to ask people questions and kind of act like I don't know what's going on. So they'll tell me their perspective. But again, that was a leadership style I think I gained after uh, the accident. But I felt extremely well prepared from uh, the point of view of, of view of being able to fly the shuttle, operate the systems on the shuttle. I knew the people, I knew my crew. I, I thought NASA, you know, maybe they felt like they stuck their neck out by asking a woman to do that. I know there was discussion as to whether should we change out uh, the crew after the accident. The NASA leadership decided to keep the four crew members, the core crew members, myself as commander, Jim Kelly as pilot, um, and then our two mission specialists, Steve Robinson and Soichi Noguchi, because of how well prepared we were. And I really wanted to lead that mission. In fact, I remember uh, the Monday after the accident, Monday morning, I went into my training manager and I said to him, I'm gonna fly this mission if it takes five years and I'm all in. We lost seven crew members, right? We lost our seven friends on Columbia. I did not want the shuttle program canceled because what would that be saying about their sacrifice? I mean, they gave their lives for something, a mission that was so important, the mission of exploring space. And to just cancel a program because it's risky was not the way I thought we should be going. Up on, the purpose of the shuttle was to build the space station, right? We're gonna fly the shuttle until the space station is built. And uh, NASA made the right decision by continuing the shuttle program. Thanks, Eileen, for taking the time to do this and certainly for sharing your deep insights uh, regarding uh, Columbia. The lessons that were learned from the Columbia mishap will serve this nation in perpetuity to ensure the safety of future space flight that we will continue to have based on what's going on in Artemis and the Orion program. Now we're at the end of the video. We can't get to all of the specifics, but please leave your questions at our, the end of the video and we'll get to them as much as we possibly can. And we'd ask you to subscribe. And if you have, thank you. And if you haven't, subscribe anyway. I gotta get back to work. <laughs>